Welcome everyone, I'm Tobias Paul from Humboldt University Berlin and in this talk we're going to look at a modeling approach for the interactions of mutation, dormancy and transfer in bacterial populations, which has been developed in joint work with Jochen Blatt and Andras Tobias from TU Berlin. We have three mechanisms that we want to investigate. The first one is mutation, which is the random alteration of genes. The second one is horizontal gene transfer, which is the ability of bacteria to exchange genetic information via conjugation, which you can think of as two bacteria meeting and then connecting via a pilus or a pipe through which they can pass plasmids which contain genetic information. This mechanism, however, reduces the speed of cell division because these additional plasmids need to be replicated in cell division as well. Thirdly, we have dormancy, which is the ability of bacteria to become metabolically less active in unfavorable conditions. And while in the dormant state, the bacteria can resuscitate spontaneously or responsively to the environment and become active again. So how do we go about modeling the interaction of these three mechanisms? Recently, Nicolas Champagnat, Sylvie Melia, and Viet Chitran introduced a toy model for investigating the interaction of mutation and horizontal gene transfer. So we build up on their model and incorporate dormancy into it. The model is an individual based one with a trait space, which in our case will be the two dimensional delta grid on the interval 0, 4, which is a useful choice because then we have one component governing the strength of dormancy and another component governing the strength of horizontal gene transfer. The choice of the interval 0, 4 is arbitrary. Of course, you could choose any other interval you like and adopt the rates that we will discuss shortly accordingly. An individual of trait xy will give birth to another individual at rate 4 minus x plus y over 2. So there is a trade-off uh, between the strength of dormancy and the strength of horizontal gene transfer and the ability to reproduce. At birth, we have mutations, which are directed mutations. Uh, the mutations occur at pro with probability k to the minus alpha. And then again, with probability one half, the mutation is beneficial in the first component or the mutation is beneficial in the second component. Otherwise, if there is no mutation, then the trait is the same as the parent trait. We have death of individuals, which can occur in two ways. We can have death by age or natural death, which occurs at rate one. And we can have death by competition, where competition events occur at rate C times N over K, where N is the total population size and C is some positive constant. And then at a competition event with probability one minus P times X, the individual dies. We have the horizontal gene transfer, which will be governed by the second component. And when two individuals meet, which happens at rate tor over N, the individual with the larger second component is able to transfer its entire trait onto the individual with the lower second component. For dormancy, at competitions events, which happen at rate C times N over K, with the probability P times X, that an individual becomes dormant. And dormant individuals do not reproduce and are not affected by horizontal gene transfer. Furthermore, dormant individuals die at a constant rate kappa, which may be equal to zero or larger than zero, and they become active again spontaneously at some positive rate. Now we are interested in the dynamics of the population sizes as time evolves. And it turns out that a good quantity of interest is the exponent of the carrying capacity K, which appeared in the death rate. Taking uh, the exponent with base K uh, is equivalent to taking the logarithm with base K of the population size. And indeed, this is a good choice as it turns out that under suitable conditions, these exponents converge as the carrying capacity tends to infinity in probability in L infinity. And we can even explicitly calculate this limiting function. However, under suitable conditions is a bit vague. Uh, we need to take care of a number of technical conditions, which I do not want to go into too much detail here. 
However, I do want to convince you that this result may hold. And the idea to proving this result is to separate the times on our time scale into intervals on which there is exactly one distinguished resident trait, which is of order k, and intervals in which there is competition between two traits, which are simultaneously of order k. The competition phases then vanish on the log k time scale, which is not too easy to show and uh, just needs to be believed. However, during the resident phases, we can then couple each process with, with bi-type branching processes with, with immigration with fixed rates, which is due to the fact that the population size is governed by this one distinguished resident trait. Coupling with these branching processes is very good because we have uh, nice convergence results for those. And here I present a convergence result from the paper of Champagne, Melia, and Tran uh, for a normal one-dimensional branching process without immigration. So if we have a branching process with some initial condition, k to the beta minus one, and some fitness, b minus d, then the logarithm of this population size converges as k tends to infinity towards this affine function. I want to convince you of this result because if you can believe this result, you can believe that even in our more complex model, the limiting function may be an affine function which uh, depends on the fitness. It is easy to believe this result uh, when using the approximation from the book from Ethier and Kurtz on Markov processes by an ordinary differential equation, which can in this case be easily solved and setting our time as log k uh, shows that at time t log k, the population is of order k to the beta plus lambda times n. So taking the logarithm with base k shows that on the log k time scale at time t, we are uh, logarithmically of order beta plus lambda times t. Now, instead of going furthermore into the proof, uh, we will look at a couple of examples and emergent behaviors. Indeed, uh, this may be a bit confusing at first because our trade space becomes large quite quickly, even when our delta is very small. Uh, here we have chosen delta to be 1.51, which means that we have nine traits in total and we split them into three graphics. So each graphic shows the exponent of three different traits. In the top left corner, we have the traits which are not able to perform uh, to exert dormancy. They are zero in the first component. In the top right, we have the traits which are mediocre in dormancy. And on the bottom left, we have the traits which are very good at becoming dormant. And then by color, we are going uh, in the strength of horizontal gene transfer. So the blue individuals are not able to perform horizontal gene transfer in any of the three graphics. Uh, the orange uh, individuals are able to perform horizontal gene transfer, but not as good as the green ones. Now, looking at the exponents, we see that there is not that much going on. The only exponents reaching one are in the top left, and the top right and bottom left never reach one. We see a cyclic behavior here, which has been observed by Champagne, Melia, and Tran before. So this simply means that the effect of dormancy is not strong enough in this case for these parameters. However, increasing the strength of the dormancy parameter P by 0 0.01 shows a very different behavior where we get into an approximate dormancy uh, coexistence regime between two traits which cannot become dormant and one trait which can become dormant. Further increasing the dormancy parameter uh, changes this behavior drastically where we get into a non-cyclic behavior, which is due to the other dormancy traits except for delta delta being fit as well and reaching the exponent one. Further increasing uh, the dormancy parameter changes the behavior yet again quite drastically and in fact, the dormancy here is in the top right is strong enough to drive 
the trait zero zero into extinction, uh, which is responsible for this massive change in behavior. Further increasing the dormancy strength, however, uh, yields coexistence again, this time between these dormancy traits in the top right corner. So we have seen a non-monotone behavior. At first, dormancy is too weak to do anything. Then we see coexistence between a dormancy trait and non-dormancy traits. Then we see some chaotic behavior. Then again, we see uh, extinction of a trait. And in fact, a non-residency of the dormancy traits and then increasing the dormancy strength further shows that uh, the dormancy traits win overall. Now, this model, of course, is uh, very specific, and a number of straightforward generalizations are that we choose arbitrary birth or death rates. Uh, we can uh, change the competition rates to be uh, dependent on the trade. Right now, we have one constant C governing all competition rates, but this could be trade dependent. And we can have trade dependent dormancy probabilities as well. And then again, we have. Uh, a very specific trait space, which could be generalized to be an arbitrary graph and include different mutational paths, such as having backward mutations. Uh, this convergence result that we have seen here has been shown for these generaliz generalizations in absence of dormancy uh, by uh, Charlene Smadi, Anna Kraut, and Lauren Kukil in a recent preprint. And of course, it would be interesting to incorporate dormancy then into this generalized model. If you are interested in the nitty gritty details, then you can have a look at the archive preprint. And otherwise, I'd like to thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to having discussions with you.